Welcome to your Daily Five for Wednesday, December 20th, 2023. I followed up They Live By Night with a movie that I actually only knew about because the Red Letter Media Group put out their the second part of their 2023 catch-up episode. And in that episode, one of the films that Mike reviewed and liked was a film from this year called Aporia. I had never even heard of this film. Uh, the only person I knew uh, that was in it as far as an actor was Judy Greer, who, as Mike points out in their, their episode, is a very reliable character actor. And I thought, okay, this sounds like a, a modern, well, not modern, I should say another, another film that, that was in the vein of something like Primer which is a very grounded attempt at a time travel story. Now, in this case, there's no time travel, really, at least no time travel by human beings. Instead, the time travel element is that there is a machine that can send a particle back in time to a specific place, at which point it bursts. And if you aim that particle and have it uh, resolve inside of somebody's skull, well, then they die. And this is basically the central point of the movie is, okay, how do we use this machine? When is it morally ethical to use this machine? And what are the consequences? And I, of course, will talk about this in length on Friday, and all of my clips for Friday are this. I, 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 I really only intended to talk about They Live By Night, but then I heard about this from that episode from Red Letter Media, and I thought, oh, I really want to watch this and just see what it's like. I didn't know whether it was going to be something where I'd really necessarily do a review on it, but it was such a wonderfully done movie. I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. And I didn't read really anything in terms of reviews or the story outside of what Red Letter Media talked about. And then after I finished the movie, sure enough, the reviews are very polarized. They're either glowing or they people just don't get it. And uh, some of the reviews are baffling. I'll talk about that more on Friday because it, it, I don't know what some of these people watched or, I mean, when people are talking about it's not like Back to the Future, I think, okay, it never was going to be. But I would just tell people, this is a very well-made, small, grounded movie that has a time travel element. There are no big action scenes. In fact, much of the film is dialogue driven. It's really about three, well, technically four characters and the, the, what the events take place over a very compressed time period in a very a small number of locations. So if you're looking for, again, Primer. If, you, if you've seen Primer and you like Primer, now I'm not going to say this is as well made as, as Primer is in terms of the math and everything, because Primer, boy, that's the movie that famously you need basically a diagram to be able to keep track of. This is not to that level. It is definitely a more simple approach to certain time travel or time alteration problems, I guess, but I think it works very well. I think it, it's, it's, I don't have a problem that there's probably some things that are a bit, I don't know, I was going to say sanded off in terms of the details, but I don't know. I, I don't think it actually fails any real logic tests. I mean, there's some things where you, if you're going to approach this and really try to hard science, break it down, then it probably will start to fall apart. I'm not going to say it's an airtight narrative, but I don't think that's really the point of it. I think the movie is really talking about the ethics of trying to decide what to do when you have this type of somewhat godlike power and what the effects are and what you don't intend. I mean, the kind of what you would expect out of a, a small scale, again, time alteration. I want to say time travel. There, nobody's traveling, but a time alteration film going, uh, trying to alter events and predict what they'll do and then deal with the fallout of things that cannot be reversed. That's really what the core of the movie is. And I think as long as you go in knowing that and have the expectations set correctly, I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed this film. I really liked it. I thought I was guessing at certain things. They didn't turn out the way I thought. There were aspects of it that I, I really appreciated that they actually talk about. That usually in movies like this, they just jump right past. And some of that will be covered in the clips on Friday. So I would say, though, if you don't if you don't want to be spoiled by the Friday show, rent it for four dollars on Amazon. It's just it's an hour and 45 minutes. I think it's really, really good. Again, just understand what it is. This is definitely I mean, watch the trailer and you'll get the idea. But this is definitely a movie that's more about the ideas and the fallout of making certain decisions as opposed to, you know, they're not going to go back and see dinosaurs or anything like that. So it is definitely not back to the future, nor is it quite as hardcore as primer in its logic, I don't think. But still a very entertaining, well done film. Again, it's Aporia from 2023. Worth watching. Later.